on today's show, we will have Connor, who is a solar hood customer, went solar, but then he decided to take it up a notch and go geothermal. So let's talk with Connor about geothermal today. Cool, so let's get started here. Yeah, um, so tell us how you got into solar first. Let's start with solar, but I wanna quickly get to like what you're doing with geothermal, which sounds like yeah. you just completed that yesterday, geothermal? Yeah, yeah, we finally just completed all the work yesterday. Um, and uh, we flipped the switch and I've been just sort of, sort of like monitoring my energy usage. Um, and I think it's like really gonna save me money um, over the long term, but mm -hmm. even like the medium term. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we did. Um, so um, I actually replaced um, two traditional gas furnaces mm -hmm. uh, and then like AC units with like condensing mm -hmm. coils. Uh, and what we did was we um, brought in and replaced the main floor unit um, with the, the water furnace is what yeah. they call it. Okay. Um, which basically takes the fluid that's pumped through the ground and then compresses it to heat it to like whatever temperature you mm -hmm. want. Yeah. Um, so we replaced the ground floor one and that heated like um, my first floor in the basement. Mm -hmm. And then we left the second unit on the line until like for a couple days mm -hmm. until they were able to come in and take that out. So you went from gas to like mostly electric now is what's happening, really. Yeah, so um, that, that's a really good point. I would say that um, I still use gas for basically cooking. Yeah, uh, and that's uh, fine, yeah. Yeah, and the other benefit of the geothermal system is that actually it, it um, provides hot water mm -hmm. just from like the excess oh, yeah. that it generates. Cool. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, so it benefits you. That would save you. a lot of money. Oh yeah, just for that sure. Alone. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, our, I mean, cutting out gas when you have solar and you yeah. want to go green, and converting as many of those things yeah. to electric is totally cool. Like yeah. that's the way to go. So yeah, props it's to you. it's better than just like a straight electric heat pump. Um, just because, mm -hmm. as we I don't know know or might not know, mm -hmm. um, straight electric heat pumps can be somewhat expensive mm -hmm. um, right. in terms of electricity. But when your heat pump is just like the dirt underneath your feet, yeah. it makes it a lot cheaper. So the basics yeah. of geothermal. Um, and, and I should I should stop you there. Like um, it's it's not actually geothermal. I think the mm -hmm. proper like terminology is like ground source heat pump. Okay. Because right. geothermal is like Iceland where they have like natural like, hot <laughs> springs. Right. Yeah. And I don't have a hot spring. Okay. Like, so then we got a cooler term yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. So a cooler we're not just geothermal. Term. We're ground source yes. heat pump. Yes. Yes. We'll just drop that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So not a hot spring, um, just dirt, which which makes it awesome because yeah. not everywhere has hot springs, but as far as I know. Mm -hmm. third. Now there's yeah. different types of systems. Do you have a horizontal or do you have... So yeah, the, um, the, the difference, it's a really good question, is like, uh, and the reason our discussion just now informs that, uh, is that you have to have like a certain like length of basically piping that's mm. exchanging that heat in order yeah. to exchange it effectively. Um, so it's got to be like a have. certain distance right, yeah, right. to get it to. So if you have a lot of space like this way and you live out in the country or whatever, mm -hmm. you don't need to go down as far. Um, to, mm -hmm. to sort of just lay this giant horizontal mm -hmm. loop, but that takes up more surface area, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you live in the city like I do and basically have a yard the size of a parking spot, um, <laughs> you can't go this right. way for a long time, you have to go deep down. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I did. Um, I went deep down, I actually um, how, had how deep? four wells. Um, four wells, okay. Oh no, you're asking me the hard questions now. I think, I wanna say it's like four wells of 275 feet. Yeah. I yeah. could be lying, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, sounds about um, right. But yeah, and just th they're like between. You didn't know we were gonna quiz you on all the specs. Uh, well, I should have. I should have read up. I should have. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were um, between like my, my home and basically my driveway, and just this like very uh, sort of. Did they tear up your spot. yard or something, or like was it? I mean, like my discreet? my yard is no great loss anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it was no, just it like good. I've seen it. It was a. <laughs> you're, you're very kind. You were moaning um, at the time, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, so no, it was just like a little like strip of grass basically between my home and my driveway. And yeah, they like, um, there's like some dirt piled over it basically now because they like mm -hmm. um, drilled the holes. But mm -hmm. I mean, as it rains and as it settles, it's going to go back to normal mm -hmm. and it's just like completely out of sight. Out of flowers mind. on it. Yeah. Next and week. like the, the other benefit is that like on the other side of my house, I had these two like giant, ugly, like traditional like air conditioner compressors, uh -huh. um, one for each level of the house in this like just big black metal cage and it just, uh -huh. it looked kind of awful. Uh -huh. So um, I got those torn out, I got the cage um, taken off and now I'm just gonna like put down like, I don't know, a nice like rock garden on the side of my house. Yeah, just, nice. like, Gain some space. Yeah, there you go. You gain space. Yeah. Sweet. You, you switch your, your condensers from like outside the house to just like 250 feet under the ground. Yeah. That's not technically correct. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> cool. Okay guys.
Quiz time. All right, let's and do I'm, it. We're going to test your knowledge, see how much you guys know. All right. Yeah. I, I don't know anything. Yeah. All right, so cool. Let's start with question number one. Okay. The average underground temperature below the frost line is either A, 42 degrees, B, 54 degrees, C, 68 degrees, or D, 98.2 degrees. Ooh, um, I'm liking B a lot, but I'm... I was always a fan of Nick Lachey, but I'm going to have to go with B. <laughs> B is correct. I was also going to do B, I swear. Well... That Connor a, got that one. He answered first. Well, we need like a little buzzers or something. That was a that was a 98 degrees joke for those of you. I know I got that. <laughs> okay, question number two: True or false? A geothermal heat pump doesn't produce any exhaust. A true or B false? Oh, your buzzer. Whose buzzer work. was that? I can't oh, even tell. I claim. Cool. I claim shenanigans. But go ahead. Geothermal does not produce any exhaust. That is correct. Very good. That is it. All right, you guys, question number three. Mm -hmm. True or false, a geothermal system can't be utilized in cold locations because the ground becomes too cold. A, true, or B, false? Oh, Connor, in with the buzz. Yeah, you can. Um, I'm going to go with false on that one. That is correct. Boom. <sighs> I was also thinking the same, but he's quick to the buzz. I was going to say, he beat you on the buzzer. buzzer, he's got it turned up louder than me. <laughs> Moving on. Question number four. If space is not an issue, which type of system would be the best option for the average residential home? A, horizontal system, B, vertical system, C, open loop system, or D, radiant floor heat system? Don't get distracted by that last one, even though that would be nice. I, I really want that I, in my house so yeah, bad. I believe it's so a. I don't have to wear socks in my house. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think I think A is a good one too. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can really if you don't if space is not an issue, yeah. you can That's really, right. you can go it's horizontal. Obviously, it's obviously, it's like a sprawling yeah. system. Goes with the horizon. It just so, goes off A is correct. Boom. Yes. All right, we so both we both get got a point that one. For that one. All right, guys, question number five. How deep is a typical horizontal closed loop system buried? A, 20 no to 25 idea. feet. B, 10 to 15 feet. C, 4 to 6 feet. Or D, 3 to 5 feet. Oh, man. This is a tough one here. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, um, this is one of those hard multiple choice questions where the answers are mm -hmm. really too close together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, bet yeah. you'd have to have the city come out and like mark where everything is. Mm -hmm. Oh, you? definitely did. There's like electrical lines and I water, think water lines. lines. I'm gonna go with. Lines. I'm gonna go with. Craziness me. happening. Are we allowed to answer the the, the same one? Use the same answer. Ooh. Yeah, that's okay. Because you then you just get. You were digging the ten to fifteen too. I don't know. I'm digging the fifteen into that ten to fifteen. Yeah, you like that. <laughs> you know, it's just a range. Three to five is too like three to five. Yeah, no. Or, who, who cares? That's that like dirt it's is freezing. so variable. Yeah, it's freezing. That dirt gets that. so hot in the summer. It's yeah. so cold in the winter. Yeah, it's garbage. It, it's garbage dirt. We want the, like the good dirt. Yeah, the good that's dirt. that's above frost line yeah. here. You probably don't want that. <sighs> so you're going. Ooh. You're going to be two. So the question I think she just gave us the answer is where is the frost? Line? I just eliminated yeah. one of them for you. <laughs> that's it. Okay. Does do you know? Oh, I know. <laughs> I know all the she answers. Knows all but how do we know that she knows? She's like a I am the keeper expert. of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know, in the interest of uh, just uh, either opening this game up or closing oh, it. Oh, you're going. I'm going to go for A. I like that choice, too. But I'm sticking with my guns on B. You guys are both wrong. It's C. Four to six feet. Four to six feet. <gasps> really? <laughs> All right. I had no idea there was someone Still under. Still three to two. Okay. Question number six. All right, number six. When and where was the first ever geothermal power generator created? A, mm. 312 BC with the Roman Empire. B, <laughs> 1086 in England. 1904 in Italy. Or 2019 at Connor's house. I don't know. Well, I believe it was. As important as you your install You need to take credit was. for this, Connor. <laughs> yes. You're just creating a wiki article just, right now. I like, had an idea. Um, <laughs> You know, I believe it was A three twelve B C. I think the system was called a Hippocost. Mm. You did your homework. That Let's sounds just... amazing. Did this go into your evaluation of whether I just... you should put this in or not? Like you kind of wanted to do um, a little throwback to the you know I'm I'm I three twelve B C days. I just I was really into Latin. Mm. Um, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. He knows his Roman Empire. That's, that's my Ooh. guess. Is he right you or is he wrong? I'm not going to tell you well, until you choose one. 1086 is, two year, is 20 years after the Battle of Hastings with William the Conqueror, and he felt really cold in England. Yeah. So, could be that one. Could be. What's your answer, Luke? Hmm. 
But then again, 1904 think? Italy was a very cold winter, so it's tough. I remember that winter. <sighs> I remember it fondly. <laughs> I think it's older than 1904, but I'm not quite sure it's 312. I'll go with B, you know? Can I go with B? B. 1086 England. The actual answer is... 1904 in Italy. Oh, a gentleman there's, named there's Pietro. New technology, just a mere Canelli or something years old. to that effect. There's, there's no way that's correct. Created. Oh, it was sorry. the first power generator. He's challenging that. I, and I he's challenge. Got a phone a friend. Phone a friend. Yeah, phone a friend. Yeah. friend. All right. <laughs> I need to make up some ground on these last three questions, though. I think we're still just apart by one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's still a heated race. It is a heated race. Tight. Okay, so question guys, number question seven. number eight or seven. Seven. seven? We're, on we're on seven. seven. Okay, mm -hmm. we're on seven. The United States leads the world in geothermal production. Mm. So the question cool is, like which states are the top three contributors mm. to that production here in the U.S.? Is it A. California, Texas, and Hawaii? Mm -hmm. B. California, mm -hmm. Nevada, and Utah? C, California, Texas, and Utah, or D, California, Hawaii, and Wyoming. There was some mixing and matching going on there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of throwing me So curly. you might take uh, a look at that. But I'm thinking... Mix and match. I'm thinking either B or C. California is part of them all. Utah. That landscape does seem like it's friendly to geothermal. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you anything. And then, as well as... Yeah, think about Nevada your geography lessons. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going with... I'm going with C. Going with C. California, Texas, vote. and Utah. Connor, so what you got? I believe the state of Utah um, has geothermal tax credits, like at a state level. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So... Speaking of which, did you take advantage of some rebates? I did. KCPNL yeah. um, mm -hmm. gave me some very nice rebates. Mm -hmm. Um... And then, in addition to the 30% federal tax credit that yep. was um, renewed in the most recent tax law. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cool. Nice. It's pretty nice. Cool. Um, Check your incentives and your rebates. So, my question then becomes, do I think Texas or Nevada produces mm -hmm. more geothermal? Right. Man, I gotta go with Texas. It's a big state. You ever drive across Texas? Yeah. It's like 15 hours. There's lots of dirt there. Lots of earth. Lots of dirt. You know? Lots of dirt. West Texas, though? I don't <laughs> it's hot. hot. So, are you guys both going with C? I yeah. think so. All right, the correct answer is B, California, oh. Nevada, and Utah. You need to differentiate. It was close. You guys no, did man. pretty good. You got yeah. two out of the three. Nevada. So that's pretty good. It's and for bonus right. points, do you know the percentage share that California produces of the geothermal in the US? I'm going to say in the 30... 30%? 30%. And this is a bonus, right? It's a bonus. I'm going to go with 27.432%. Oh, oh, under but not over. <laughs> Okay, well, Luke is closest without going over. It's nice. actually 73 percent. Oh my share this, huh? 73 percent. It's a big Luke state, yeah. and apparently they're all Damn. about the geothermal oh, okay. California. Damn. So makes sense. Now they you kind know. Of need in this the more area. you know. Final question, which I think is supposed to be question number eight. What is the second highest <sighs> geothermal producing country? Is it A. The Philippines? B. Kenya? C, Indonesia, or D, so Iceland. So we are all knotted up. So maybe we we submit our answers independently and we see who wins this one. I'm going to say three, two, one, and then you have to answer. And then go. Kind of like okay. rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Go. go. Uh, okay. okay. Do you want to play rock, paper, scissors for time? We, right? If we have to, okay. we will. Okay. Three, two, one. Iceland. D. So you said D mm -hmm. and you said Iceland. So mm -hmm. you guys are both mm -hmm. guessing the same. I too would have guessed Iceland, but you are, we're all wrong. It's okay. actually A, the Philippines. Uh, Didn't oh. know that. I was thinking. Yeah. So yeah. Long, man. That it's a ringer. Sense. I would have never guessed the Philippines for that geothermal. That is weird. But, huh. yeah. Okay, so we're going down as a tie. We'll have to we'll, put, it uh, up, put it on we'll, the We'll uh, revisit. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, uh, Double or nothing later. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. So uh, tell me how your solar's <laughs> working out. You know, we talked a lot about geothermal, but like, yeah. you know, are you liking it? Like... Shoot it straight, you know? Yeah. Um, I absolutely love my solar system. Mm -hmm. um, like, prior to geothermal, it was great because it sort of, like, reduced my electricity bills by um, something like a 100 125 mm -hmm. uh, dollars a month, which is Significant. awesome. Significant, yeah. Um, and then s the addition of geothermal just, I don't know, creates this sort of um, compound effect where it's, like, 
basically my daily energy consumption from geothermal is more than covered by my solar panels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, it's just like all my heating and cooling needs and hot water for my house mm -hmm. is covered through these two systems. Mm -hmm. cool. nice. uh, yeah, and basically for, for, yeah. for the cost of the So the one-two punch is really impressive. Yeah. 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 Cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, shoot us your questions. Hashtag Ask Solarhood, but we have a question for this week. This week's question is, is there a better part of the country that works better for geothermal mm -hmm. than other parts of the country? Mm -hmm. And go. Well, in our analytical minds, probably, we want more details on this question. Do we, is it incentives? <laughs> is it like efficiency based? But I'm guessing, you know, that constant temperature across the U.S. Um, is pretty stable, mm -hmm. right? And so... Really, you don't need to be in a desert or in a cold place to, right. to have geothermal. Um, right, and um, sort of like a, the, the ground source technology isn't, or, or geothermal, mm -hmm. um, isn't lo uh, limited solely to dirt. Like you can do a system with like a lake or like, like you can exchange your heat that way. So um, you can adapt this technology to multiple environments. It just um, becomes a question of like um, at where and what cost. Yep. And I think anywhere in the world, um, well, anywhere in the United States at least, mm -hmm. but definitely anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. Um, geothermal is something we should all move toward adopting because we have a limitless supply of heating and cooling like mm -hmm. four to six feet under our feet if we're doing horizontal. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. So yeah. do that one-two punch, solar geothermal, you know? Cool. Do it. Do it today. I love it. So Connor, uh, having gone through all of this uh, in a good way, it's not like you slogged out, you know. Having gotten to experience it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put solar on and do so geothermal. Do you have it. any advice uh, for people out there that are thinking about, do I do geothermal? Do I do solar? Yeah. I mean, do it like right now. Do it today. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, Don't though, um, yeah, it's it's been an amazing experience just um, basically being able to um, live in a future that I think the rest of humanity mm -hmm. is going to experience in like 10 to 15 or mm -hmm. hopefully fewer years. Mm -hmm. um, I guess like my piece of advice would be, um, use the resources that are available to you, mm -hmm. um, like SolarHood. Like yeah, we can help. Today. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Cool. Um, and just like go out, get a quote, um, look at your options, and mm -hmm. then yep. um, do it as soon as you can. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, Cool. I love it. All right, well, that's a wrap for today's show. Thanks, Connor, for coming on yeah, the show. It's too bad we tied in our quiz. <laughs> You're telling show, me. But, you know, we're going to lose sleep over that. But we appreciate you tuning in. Um, do us a favor. Uh, subscribe to our show. We'll have more of these topics coming up. Um, and you know, and if you're on Facebook or other social, tag a friend that um, that you think would like to Greek out, geek out about being Greek. Or Greek out. Greek out. <laughs> Maybe that'll be in our next quiz. Yeah. Is Greek yeah. like? They invented a lot. Of I will not win that one, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye.